Well, 343 just confirmed some information about the event that's coming up this week, the Entrenched event, where you get to unlock your fractured armor core, guys. So this is going to be a big week for Halo coming up for you all. And the mode that's going to be Land Grab. This is a brand new mode that's never been in Halo. It seems like it'd be a combination between King of the Hill and Strongholds in a way. We also have some information on the weekly ultimate and also the pass for this event. So let's just dive right into all this good stuff. So here is actually the leaked event pass at guys obviously this is a leak so don't take it as gospel but this is most likely all the stuff that's gonna be coming with it uh the 343 did state that this is kind of like a old school world war ii kind of theme to this entire core which is kind of interesting if you guys want to catch out everything that's in this just pause the video but I'm glad to see that this event pass is full of good content where actual armor pieces. They got I mean, some emblems and stuff like that, but that's kind of like whatever. Uh, I'm sure that's kind of more up to like maybe the leak didn't show exactly what's going to be in this pass. So once the pass does go live tomorrow, I'll make sure to share with you guys here on the channel. Uh, but we have like cores additions we're here for different armor pieces we have different coatings as well and different stances so like actual content people want to have for customization this would be worth grinding out and i wouldn't expect to see any kind of changes happening to the way they do these different types of fracture events uh pretty much as 343 did state that uh, we covered in a previous video here that they are pretty much happy with how like the fracture core event went for season one with the tenrai events and so i can assume to see something very similar where every time this entrenched event comes back it will be land grab that you'll be playing for the whole time which can get a little repetitive for sure but at least it's a different game mode besides fiesta which is something that's been in halo since well forever and 343 did previously state that the way that the fracture events worked out previously worked out rather well for them so there's not going to be a whole lot of change happening with this uh, event each week that it comes back. I'm assuming another six weeks, as we do know that this whole season is gonna be another six months like season one. We also have an image of the weekly ultimate event challenge here, guys. And then you'll be getting this kind of cool, kind of a gold visor kind of look to this whole thing right here. Hopefully you can maybe use it across different cores. Though I don't really expect to see that happen as 343 did state that they're looking to do cross core customization with like visors and coatings for more canon cores where fracture ones are going to be left on their own, which I can kind of understand that for sure. And they said that the challenge is to complete three land grab matches, which is certainly something that's very doable. Just play the game. That's the, that's the kind of challenges I like to see. I don't like to see the challenges where it's like, oh, you have to make sure you back smack three people while it's raining outside and something like that. Like they're so circumstantial that it's very tough to actually complete. And you kind of have, feel like you're just playing just luckily has stuff happen. Challenges like that, I do appreciate a lot. We saw this last time as well for last week's ultimate reward where I believe you have to get 7,500 points in PVP matches. Just play whatever, play the game, and you get your unlocks. That's how these challenges really should be playing out. Very similar to what we had with the MCC challenge system. I did cover this image in a previous video, so I'll just cover it real briefly, but you can see the different types of variations we can have with this new entrenched armor core system. Now, there is some information about how land grab actually plays out. Since it's been so long, I think it's worth kind of covering back over again. So basically, the idea of land grabs at the start of the match, there are three neutral zones around the map. When a player captures a zone, it is locked and gives their team one point. When all zones are captured, there is an intermission before three new neutral zones spawn up. The first team to 11 wins. Though there is a very interesting mechanic towards the end of the game right here. And 343 states saying, you know, 11 points, kind of an odd number to choose, right? You usually do like rounded off numbers like 10, 15 maybe even 12 because it's like rounds of three and stuff like that and three for three states because matches progress in sets of three points 11 points will ensure hotly contested land grab games most commonly and in a three zone set we do however have special logic to help craft a more compelling crescendo at the match end if a team is one point from victory then two zones will spawn if both teams are one point from winning then only one final zone will spawn and decide the match so really cool way to kind of have more dynamic elements with the match as well so it's not the exact same thing every time keeping it competitive keeping a good crescendo as they state to the whole thing so it keeps the match fun which is really great they took that into consideration and this whole event goes live tomorrow if you're watching this video on monday which most of you are i'll definitely take a quick look at how land grab and how everything plays out with the tuesday update 
In some other gaming news, it looks like EA is getting back into making Lord of the Ring games, which were certainly popular back in the early 2000s, and they're partnering up here with Middle Earth Enterprises for a new mobile title. This article right here states that EA's Capital Games, the studio behind the billion dollar Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes, is developing a free to play title called Lord of the Rings Heroes of Middle Earth. It is a collectible role playing game that aims to offer a strategic and social competitive experience saying that players can expect high fidelity graphics cinematic animations and stylized art which judging from all that information it sounds like it'd be a game well kind of similar to this built for mobile from the ground up with a kind of stylized art style right here as well to get the chance to play some more lord of the rings awesomeness right here obviously the gameplay will certainly play out quite a bit different, but interesting to see that Lord of the Rings is coming back for some more gaming awesomeness. And I had no idea that Star Wars game was like a billion dollar game, but mobile gaming is very lucrative and totally not shocked to honestly see that happen, though still slightly surprised. I'm assuming we could probably see something very similar when it comes to the Lord of the Rings title as well. This news coming right off at the heels of EA looking to possibly sell the company and merge with a larger company, it sounds like. In this article, he said that in recent years, the media companies have taken greater interest in a rapidly growing industry of gaming which is very true gaming is becoming much more complicated and expensive but also much more lucrative as well then wilson who is the ceo of electronic arts has held talks with a number of different potential suitors like disney apple and amazon also saying that ea has been persistent on pursuing a sale ever since the microsoft activision announcement right there as well now i'm sure maybe people's first reaction is like oh my god if they sell ea to a larger company would wilson be out of the ceo role and maybe ea wouldn't be so scummy to their players not exactly because it looks like wilson still wants to be able to hold a ceo type position but with the ea side of things not necessarily involved with the larger companies I recently put this poll out on my YouTube channel. If you guys want to catch these polls and interact with the channel, make sure you subscribe to keep yourself up to date with all that good stuff here. I also like to post different things like, you know, updates happen with Halo, new videos and stuff like that that go live. But in this post right here, I talk about, do you think that the Microsoft acquisition of Blizzard, Activision Blizzard is a good or bad thing? Most of you guys are saying good, which is really cool to see that like, although obviously we're most likely all Microsoft Halo boys out here on this channel. Uh, so that sounds like a great thing for us. So I am slightly concerned to have so much power being consolidated to so few companies we see this happen with the american economy where basically like every industry is basically controlled by like three or four different types of companies which giving that much power to a industry for a select few of people can be very concerning but also could provide more resources for gaming whereas it's becoming more complicated more expensive to run and create these AAA titles where not a single studio can't make a game anymore and you need to have like support studios up to, like crazy like call of duty it takes like 11 studios to make a new call of duty every year basically but we'll just have to wait and see how it all plays out if you guys are new to the channel may say content for me check out these playlists right here i got linked to all my gaming news and informational videos right there thanks so much for watching greatly appreciate it catch you on the next one peace out